Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update. I realized that sales is storytelling. Sales is trying to convince someone, trying to add value in some someone's life by selling an idea that you believe in. Today what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what I do best, which is tell a story. Now this is a very simple story. I'm going to tell a story of my life. And I'm going to tell you the story of my life through a lot of visuals from a world that we are all in love with. And that world is Bollywood. I'm going to introduce you guys to something that I have fallen in love with, something that I've been doing for the last three and a half years, and that's Inside I Am. So to begin with a little bit about me. When I was a kid uh, in school, I was exactly like that in my own uh, airy fairy world, thinking about all these romantic notions about how this world runs. I was from a Gujarati family in Bombay, so yeah, my parents were pretty much like that. <laughs> uh, very expressive, very over the top, love having a good time, going for Garba nights, all those sorts of things. A very Gujarati, simple uh, business family kid. And I used to love one particular item the most, which was dosa. I still continue to. Uh, so that's a little bit about how I was before I entered college. My idea of college, by the way, was also created by, you know, what happens in films. So my idea of college was something like this. I thought college was about, you know, dancing on stage and, you know, celebrating friendship days and falling in love over and over again and basically just having a great uh, time. And there are going to be hot women all around you all the time anyway, because that's how colleges are. I thought my work life was going to be something like this. <laughs> Just out of college, I'm going to jump into a suit, I'm going to walk around in Sydney feeling sad about really mundane things, and I'll have people to work for me, and I'm going to have such an entitled, beautiful life. Do you know what I thought about my love life? <laughs> I thought that doesn't matter I look this way or that way, I'm going to land a really hot girl and she's going to love me like crazy and we're going to do amazing holidays in, on a yacht in some uh, foreign location. Because all my ideas about how life is was created on the basis of films, which often lie, especially if they are Bollywood films. So with this in mind, I spent a lot of time uh, imagining these things when college hit me and I realized that college is a little different. I was a little like that Hrithik Roshan in Laksh. I was like Hrithik Roshan in the first half, just to clear, clarify. I was lost. Essentially, I would do whatever my friends would ask me to do. College festival join kar le, bahut maza aata hai. College festival join kar liya. Kisi ne bola CA kar le, bahut sahi hota hai, paisa sahi banta hai, to CA ki padhai shuru kar di. Kisi ne bola cat likh le. Mainne bola haa, ye sahi cheez hai, cat likh liya. That's how I was. But there were a couple of other things how my lifestyle was. Do you know the guy on the extreme right of the screen? Actually, likha bhi hua hai. Okay. So, <laughs> ha, so, I used to consume a lot of TV. I used to consume a lot of stories, but I used to consume a lot of junk content. I used to consume really shitty shows. I used to consume a lot of WWF. I used to consume a lot of really bad Salman Khan movies. I thought that people pretty much just do this. That's when I read this book, which is called uh, The Fourth Estate by Jeffrey Archer. This book is about these two media tycoons who want to take over all the newspapers, TV channels, radio stations all over the world, because they are in the business of influence. They want to influence the largest population possible. The way, uh, you know, Sky TV does all over the country, all over the world today, someone like Rupert Murdoch does. It's based on real life characters like these who are businessmen who run these media companies and have a massive influence on what people read and how people think about a variety of issues. And that seemed a very exciting field to me. And I was like, I have to influence people, I have to feel this power. With that in mind and a score which could only have gotten me into MICA, I got into MICA. And I became Hrithik Roshan of the second half from Laksh. I was, for the first time, I found structure to my thoughts. For the first time, I sat in the classroom and I was shaken and challenged. And I was asked to think for myself. For the first time, all the things, all the biases that you grow up with as a part of a Gujarati conservative family were challenged. All these ideas about what is caste, what is gender, what is race were challenged. And that became the foundation of how I started looking at 
influence how I started looking at media, how I started looking at communications. I realized that that is not what I want to chase. I don't want to chase ideology. I realized that the world is running from money. It's the flow of the money that is important. These ideologies are not important. Left wing, who is left, right wing, who is right, it doesn't matter from that. The world is listening to the money of money. That was an important realization along with the fact that for the first time, I was out of my cocoon. I met people from smaller towns. I met people from really different backgrounds. I met army kids. I met kids from, uh, kids from families whose both parents were professionals who would work hard and didn't have time for them. I grew up in a very different family, a business family structured very differently. Also, I met people from a variety of cl classes, people from really simple, humble backgrounds, having amazing ambitions. And that really changed the perspective for me. It made me realize that I need to work a lot harder if I want to become something like this. If I want to achieve what I want to achieve, it's not going to be that, yeah, I'm an entitled man, I'm an amazing, talented man, I'm going to reach where I want to reach. It's going to be very hard for me. With that, my first job was at Hindustan Times, a media company, just the way I wanted it. Often in college, I used to dream, because I was a Bombay kid, that I was in South Bombay, Times of India, बिल्डिंग में हेडक्वार्टर्स में काम करूंगा वहां से सूट में बाहर निकलूंगा फिर मैं बार में जाऊंगा और वहां पे मेरे जैसे ही बहुत सारे और लोग होंगे और उनके साथ में पॉलिटिक्स बिजनेस ये सब डिस्कस करूंगा और बहुत स्मार्ट लगूंगा ऐसा कुछ हुआ नहीं बट मैं हिंदुस्तान टाइम्स गया और मैं दिल्ली में काम कर रहा था इन कनॉट प्लेस एट द हेडक्वार्टर्स बट आई वॉज नॉट दिस स्मार्ट गाय हु वॉज वेरिंग अ जैकेट एंड हु वॉज वेरी नॉलेजेबल अबाउट द वर्ल्ड एनी थिंग I realized that sales is such an important thing. Every day I would go out to all sorts of brands and try to sell ad space in the newspaper. And that's when I realized that sales is storytelling. Sales is trying to convince someone, trying to add value in some someone's life by selling an idea that you believe in. I also, in the process, the media business at that time was going through a lot. So what Happened was that जो पहले सिर्फ एक newspaper ad लेते थे front page पे, those guys wanted to integrate themselves into the content of the newspapers, which is where the whole branded content journey began. We realized that the media has become the message. जो brand अपने को communicate करना चाहता है, वो अगर वो news के news article के through communicate करेगा, it's better. So for example, Cadbury is wanted to celebrate Father's Day, so Cadbury just didn't do an ad. We created an entire thing where you could write a letter to your father on that Father's Day. That letter would be stuck on the uh, Hindustan Times newspaper. And you can uh, post it to your father, and it, it will be sent to him along with the Cadbury's chocolate, uh, dairy milk. So those are the kind of things that we got to do at Hindustan Times. That was my first professional experience. I hear so many students here that I've been interacting with calling me sir. You realize the moment you enter professional life that there is no sir. There is no assumed respect for you because you are senior. You have to earn that respect. It can only happen if you prove it to them. And everybody calls each other by their first name. And that guy is very important for you to understand that every person in your life needs to earn your respect. And you can't just give it to them by calling them sir right at the beginning. But along with that, I also realized something about corporate careers. I didn't care for it so much. I didn't care that I could sell ads in my newspaper. I didn't care so much that what I'm telling the story, someone is buying it, because I don't believe in this story. And I said that I want to do something different. Which is when I spoke to who is, who is actually the founder of this company, who's uh, Ankit Doshi, who's actually an alumnus of uh, IIM Indore. I called him one night and I said, Yaar, I don't want to do it, what do I do? He said, you're D in G. You're D in G. What do you do? That you're in the morning. You're in the morning, quit. And what you have to do, is there in your life? I said, yes, what is this? It's what happens, right? When your friends challenge you, you want to prove it to them that you are bloody wrong. And I actually spent that night staring at India's map, thinking, what do I want to do? And I realized I want to do two things. One is I want to travel this country. And second is I want to write. So the next day, I quit my job. Within a month, I spent, for the next six months, I was traveling to every state in India, spent a week in 23 different cities in India, and wrote a short story set in each of these cities. That journey was my life's 
biggest experience. Up till then, I used to think that Mica is my greatest experience of my life. And it was so sad to think as a 25-year-old, my greatest experience is behind me. And then I found this to do. And for the six months, I traveled on a budget of 1,000 rupees a day to every state in India, spent a week there, and found something unique to write a fictional story about. It eventually turned into a book, which not many people read, and which got me to the next realization, that because I'm talented, because I've written a book, it's in nobody's, it's not a job of reading that book. It's not necessary that because I've written a book, I should have appreciation for me. I also realized that who is earning money when you write a book? Do you guys know that when a publisher publishes your book, about 90% of the revenue from that book goes to the publisher, and only 10% comes to the guy who creates it? That was my first realization when I got to know that, yeah, platform ka kya importance hota hai. The fact that the publisher can reach all these online websites, the fact that the publisher can reach all these physical stores which I cannot reach, makes him a far more valuable participant in this business activity and hence he takes away a large portion of the revenue. With this in mind and being pretty broke and not having done well and not made money for a long time, I went back to a job. At CNBC I figured that there were two options. I could either work for the English channel, which is typically watched by CEOs, CFOs, those kinds of people, or I could uh, be a part of the Hindi channel, which is watched by our parents. Many would argue that your parents are CEOs. <laughs> I'm just saying that a larger uh, portion of people are people who want to invest in the stock market, who want to grow their wealth, but they are small business owners, they are professionals, they are uh, employer, employed people. And we started creating stuff for, the, for them. And it was a very interesting period for me because I realized just how much important value-added content is. So, yes, you have a story. You have to tell your own stories. You have to influence people. But how can you make a difference in people's lives? How can you make a positive difference in people's lives? If I'm on point A before watching something or consuming a story, can I take that person to point B? Can I better his life in any way? That's what I realized at CNBC. Back at CNBC, the editor-in-chief at that time was Mr. Sanjay Pogalya, who was a famous Hindi journalist. And as a marketing manager over there, I asked him, Sir, what is the one thing that you have to do? You have never got to do it, but this is your dream, this is your pet project. I want to work that out for you. Because typically, those are the things that move you up, those are the things that get you noticed. So he told me that he has this entire thought about financial literacy. The whole Jandhan Yojana was also a big deal. And he wanted everybody to get financially literate in this country, and that was one of the things that he wanted to drive. I was like, "Sahi hai, ye to matlab kafi fayda ho sakta logo ko if people know how to invest, how to become financially independent, how to raise their money, how to grow their money that they've made so hardworkingly." Pure desh mein kitne saare Ponzi schemes hai. Ye pyramid scheme mein dal do, tumhe do saal mein tumhare paise double ho jayenge. We need to we need to break those down and actually educate people. And that's when I got my second opportunity to write a book. Because Mr. Sanjay Pugula was like, you have written a book before, so you know how it works. So I pitched an idea to him where I said that, okay, here's what we will do. We will make an adult financial textbook, which is going to marry two things. One is finance concepts, which are very boring, let's face it. And we're going to marry it with something that is fun and everybody loves and everybody is always enjoyed, which is Bollywood. And that's when we came up with something uh, called as Pehla Kadam. Pehla Kadam is a book where we, every financial concept is explained with a Bollywood example. So, if you have to asset, then how do you start? You start with Diwar ka dialogue where Amitabh says, Aaj mere paas paisa hai, bank balance, hai, bangla, hai, gaadi, hai, tumhare paas kya hai. What is that? What are the things that he is listing down? He is listing down his assets. So, every concept has been explained through film references, and that's what got me to write the, uh, the second book that I wrote, which is called Pehla Kadam. And again, I realized that the money has become but the big money is made by the platform. Again, the big money is made by CNBC. I was at a stage where I was like, okay, there are three things that I'm chasing. I'm chasing money. Because, bro, I mean, I live in Bombay. I need money. And yes, I have a good life, and I'm not apologetic about it. I want to earn good money. But there is passion in some things. Passion is to tell stories, passion is to listen to my voice, to communicate in my style. And the power needs to make a change. To help people in some value-adding way, in some 
टेंजेबल सब्सटेंशियल वे जिससे उनकी लाइफ थोड़ी चेंज हो सकती है